Leon here. Welcome to another episode of Star Wars Banth Legion. Today I'm going to be building my stormtroopers and showing you how to convert them so your two squads don't look quite identical. Before you get started you're going to need a few key items. Uh, a craft mat. Uh, this is just a, a thick rubber mat used for cutting. You can pick them up at most craft shops or sewing shops. A sharp Stanley knife for removing uh, mold lines. And some super glue. Uh, key item to note here is that uh, cement glue for plastic models will not work. Uh, it does not melt the plastic and form a bond uh, and Fantasy Fight Games actually tell you this in their getting started guide. We've also got a blob of blue tack here. Uh, blue tack is really handy for posing models uh, before you glue just to, to see what it's going to look like. So I've built my, I've built my first squad here, seven guys. Uh, and now I'm going to build my next seven guys but I want them to look different so I'm going to chop and change and show you what I do so let's start with a simple uh, conversion we want to alter the HH12 Trooper HH12 Trooper and DLT19 Trooper for that we just want to dry fit to see what our options are so if you take the HH12 Trooper body and give him the DLT19 You can see there that it roughly works well. So you want to just go through swapping weapons, see what fits well. You want to start off easy, uh, work your way up to get harder. And you can see here that the the DOT 19 body takes the HH 12 trooper gun perfectly. And you also keep the theme of having the heavy backpack. So the first thing you want to do when building your models is just give them a quick wash. Uh, warm, hot, soapy water uh, should do it. Bit of a bit of a quick scrub as well. Uh, it just removes any grease and uh, casting agent that might be uh, still present on the model. Uh, this can mean that when you go to paint your models, if there is some oil and grease on there, that the paint won't stick as well. So it's a good idea to give them a quick wash. Uh, next thing to do is to remove any mold lines. Uh, these are small lines left over from the casting process that shouldn't be there. So to get rid of them it's quite easy and you might see on his head there he's got something you just get your sharp knife gently run it over just to remove the the mold line. It's quite simple you do that over the whole model wherever you think something shouldn't be there. Uh, if in doubt just have a look at the uh, Fantasy Fight Games photos on the internet. or in the So this is the the HH12 Trooper's body, but I'm going to give him the DLT19 arms. So that means these notches do not line up with the ones present on the torso. So that's an easy fix. This is simple here. Anyone can do this at home. Take your knife and just chop off both nibs. You won't be needing them. Uh, so I've trimmed off all his uh, shoulders to fit in well and as you can see now you compare him to the original model here flush right arm uh, his left arm was quite slightly uh, it's got some soft uh, I don't know what they call it padding in between his armor armor plates so I've ended up with quite a flush right arm his left arm fits quite nicely there so from the back that looks absolutely seamless. It was a lot harder than I thought it would be. Uh, if you're new to modeling, I probably would not recommend uh, chopping up your models too much. So on the front side, uh, his right shoulder looks pretty good uh, to me. Uh, that's I'm happy with that. Paint will cover any imperfections. Then the only thing we have left is the gap there in his armor that's on his left shoulder. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue in place and then I'm going to use a little bit of modeling putty to fill that gap. So while he's uh, sitting there drying, what I'll do is mix, mix together some putty so that I can fill in the gaps. For that I'm using uh, a product called Green Stuff. Uh, it has uh, one part's blue, one part's yellow, mixed together makes green. So all you want to do, just chop off a thin, thin strip, then then you want to cut out the middle bit uh, where the blue meets the yellow 
uh, while it's sitting on the shops or in your bag or wherever you store it, it will slowly cure. And that bit there, just throw away because it will be already cured slightly and be lumpy. So now all you want to do when you get it is just mix it together. This can take a while, you want to make sure it's nice and mixed together. And I'm just going to feed that into his armor hole. Arthur's. Good idea just to have uh, your knife blade a little bit wet. I'll just use a bit of spit for that. Uh, just so it doesn't stick to your knife. And you just want to push it in there just to fill the gap. Now using the flat edge of your knife, just squishing it down. And you can see it's uh, it's filled up his armor, and because you're holding your knife flat against the armor, it's squishing level with the armor, so it does fill it up. And then any little bits that are look a bit rough beyond that point doesn't matter too much because you look at all the models. Uh, you know, you look at there we go. Let's find a model. Uh, you look at look at these models. They do have uh, a, a fair portion of uh, soft armor in between. You know, look between his legs. There is a bit of soft armor. So all that doesn't really matter too much, and it's tucked away in there in the corner. Once we paint over it, hopefully no one notices. So I have decided to keep the missile launcher on the heavy dude. Just for the simple fact that it does have the sidearm there. And it looks a bit better with the backpack as well. You know, a bit of spare ammunition and whatnot. So I do need to get rid of this bit because it is going to impede him. As you see with this guy. It sits over his shoulder quite snugly. So I'll just cut off, cut off the top bit here. Alright, so I have trimmed off his top bit. Trimmed off his armour. You know, just his bit of his breastplate there. Trimmed off his arms and I'm ready to glue him on. So, one last test fit. So, pushed in there, he fits in there, around the back. Now he seems to fit nicely there. Does need a bit of pressure both sides to get it to fit, so let the gluing commence. I have used a bit of extra glue here just because most of the nubs have been chopped off so there will be nothing to glue but I just need to hold that one in tightly that was right so this one I'm just going to apply a fair bit of pressure because his arms need to stick in the right spot the crouching trooper with the DLT and the standing trooper with the HH12 For this conversion, we're going to take the running trooper and the kind of standing trooper, and we're going to switch around their weapons uh, to make different squad. It's a bit different. So again, just need to follow the same principle of cleaning up our models and trimming out the arms to make them fit. Then here's the one standing with the gun swapped, and the one running with the gun swapped. These are about the easiest conversions you can do. Uh, there's no real gaps to them. If you have a bit of a closer look here, you can see all I've done is heavily trimmed off uh, all the arm joints and lined it up as best I could and glued it in for that one. Likewise, same with this one. Now, I've seen a few people on the internet chop off his left arm and reposition it. But what I'm going to do is fully remove his arms and I'm going to give him a shooting pose with his laser. So to do that, it's quite easy, but you have to be quite careful. You need to pick the line that allows you to remove remove his arm at the shoulder, 
without impacting any of the surrounding detail. So you can see here you have to be quite careful where his shoulder here meets the head. So you have to make sure that your cut is as straight as possible through there. Then all you want to do, just cut his shoulder flush in order to receive your next arm. So there you go, we have Armless Commander. So I've trimmed the sergeant's uh, pauldron down and just a point of note, uh, when you look at it, this model here, where I cut off you can see that his shoulder kind of blends into his helmet. So I ended up with a bit of a flat boring patch. So all I did, just to give it a bit of interest and to definition to the bottom of the helmet, I just took out a bit of a V-shaped chunk just underneath his helmet. And it doesn't look 100% perfect, but it does give him a bit of definition around the bottom of the helmet. Shooty squad sergeant and pointy squad sergeant. I have one set of arms left over. That is the pointy arm and the laser arm. As you can see, the shoulder pad's missing. The top half of the shoulder pad on this arm. So we need to, you have two options here. You could glue it on and use some modeling putty uh, to make the shoulder pad. But what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to try to use one of the shoulder pads from another model. Use this thing called uh, uh, instant mold. What it is, is this uh, clear plasticky mold thing that basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw into hot water let it sit, let it soften is it's going to be a bit hard to show you I want to make a mold of that shoulder like that on a flat surface that way I can push some green stuff into it when it's dry and I'll have a, hopefully have a decent shoulder so I'll just use this sheet of plastic card for the for the mold to sit flat again. So take it out of the hot water. Just want to be careful here. Uh, it is boiling water and sometimes it does get pockets of hot water in there which can squirt out as you squeeze it. So I'll just place this here and then all I'm doing is just going covering the shoulder in the instant mold. give it a nice press down. You generally want a nice big meat, meaty bit of instant mold here because that way when you come to push your green stuff into it it's a bit more rigid. Now that some time has passed and your instant mold has had a chance to dry as you can see it's now quite firm. You can just pry out depending on how you did it you might have to cut it out. Just pull it out there and you should have a mould of a shoulder pad in there. Once you have your green stuff all ready, all you need to do roll it into a bit of a sausage and just cram it into the shoulder pad. You want to apply, apply a fair bit of pressure here just to make sure there's no air bubbles or pockets. Really, really push it in once your green stuff is sufficiently dried, you can remove it from the mold. Uh, you can either bend the mold or cut it, it doesn't really matter. Whichever you find easiest, and you pop it out. And there's the imprint of the shoulder pad and a bit of the arm. Uh, you can see there it's got a, it's got a small uh, little imperfection there. So you could cast it again or just run with this. So I'll run you with this and show you what I'm going to do. So now all you want to do is trim the shoulder pad out of the flash all the excess green stuff so I've completed gluing on the shoulder and here's the finished product you see that the lines match up that looks about right, you can see there's some small gaps that I'll fill later but there you go, that's the final member of my squad so this is the squad as built as per the box and I'll run you through all the conversions I've done. So we have the running man with the arm switched with the man next to him. We have the DLT-19 switched to the crouching legs. 
we have the HH12 switched to the standing legs of the heavy. I have stock standard because there is seven, you can't do too many arm swaps. Uh, I have one man that's stock standard, which I think doesn't really matter because he is in a quite a good generic shooting pose. I have the unit sergeant with shooting shooting arms. And like you last, I have the uh, sergeant's arms sculpted on with the sculpted shoulder and the pointing hand on another trooper. And there you go. That's the conversions.